Zhongaria is a geographical region in northwest China corresponding to the northern half of Xinjiang, also known as Baijiang. Bounded by the Tian Shan mountain range to the south and the Altai mountains to the north, it covers approximately 777,000 km2, extending into western Mongolia and eastern Kazakhstan. Formerly the term could cover a wider area, conterminous with the Dzongar Khanate, a separatist state led by the native Oirats in the 18th century which was based in the area. Although geographically, historically, and ethnically distinct from the Turkic-speaking Tarim Basin area, the Qing dynasty and subsequent Chinese governments integrated both areas into one province, Xinjiang. As the center of Xinjiang's heavy industry, generator of most of Xinjiang's GDP, as well as containing its political capital area one quarter MQI, northern Xinjiang continues to attract intra-provincial and inter-provincial migration to its cities. In comparison to southern Xinjiang, Zhongaria is relatively well integrated with the rest of China by rail and trade links. Etymology, the name Zhongaria is a corruption of the Mongolian term za one quarter or one quarter ngar, or ja one quarter or one quarter ngar depending on the dialect of Mongolian used. Za one quarter or one quarter n slash ja one quarter or one quarter n means left, and ga means hand. The name originates from the notion that the Western Mongols are on the left-hand side when the Mongol Empire began its division into East and West Mongols. After this fragmentation, the Western Mongolian nation was called Zhongar. Today, the cradle of this former nation retains its name, Zhongaraya. Background Xinjiang consists of two main geographically, historically, and ethnically distinct regions, Zungaria north of the Tianshan Mountains and the Tarim Basin south of the Tianshan Mountains, before Qing China unified them into one political entity called Xinjiang Province in 1884. At the time of the Qing conquest in 1759, Zungaria was inhabited by steppe dwelling, nomadic Tibetan Buddhist Oirat Mongol Dzungar people, while the Tarim Basin was inhabited by sedentary, oasis dwelling, Turkic speaking Muslim farmers now known as the Uga people. The Qing dynasty was well aware of the differences between the former Buddhist Mongol area to the north of the Tianshan and Turkic Muslim south of the Tianshan, and ruled them in separate administrative units at first. However, Qing people began to think of both areas as part of one distinct region called Xinjiang. The very concept of Xinjiang as one distinct geographic identity was created by the Qing and it was originally not the native inhabitants who viewed it that way, but rather it was the Chinese who held that point of view. In the late 19th century, it was still being proposed by some people that two separate parts be created out of Xinjiang, the area north of the Tianshan and the area south of the Tianshan, while it was being argued over whether to turn Xinjiang into a province. Zungarian Basin. The core of Zungaria is the triangular Zungarian Basin with its central Gabanta one quarter NGGA one quarter T desert. It is bounded by the Tian Shan to the south, the Altai Mountains to the northeast, and the Tarbagatai Mountains to the northwest. The three corners are relatively open. The northern corner is the valley of the Upper Irtish River. The western corner is the Zungarian Gate a historically important gateway between Zungaria and the Kazakh steppe. Presently, a highway and a railway run through it, connecting China with Kazakhstan. The eastern corner of the basin leads to Gansu and the rest of China. In the south an easy pass leads from Arara one quarter MQI to the Turfan Depression. In the southwest the Tolbo Roro Mountains branch of the Tian Shan separates the basin from the upper Ili River. The basin is similar to the larger Tarim Basin on the southern side of the Tian Shan Range. Only a gap in the mountains to the north allows moist air masses to provide the basin lands with enough moisture to remain semi-desert rather than becoming a true desert like most of the Tarim Basin, and allows a thin layer of vegetation to grow. This is enough to sustain populations of wild camels, gerboas, and other wild species. The Dzungarian Basin is a structural basin with thick sequences of Paleozoic Pleistocene rocks with large estimated oil reserves. The Gurban Tungut Desert, China Euro unregistered trademark S second largest, is in the center of the basin. The Dzungarian Basin does not have a single catchment center. 
The northernmost section of Dzungaria is part of the basin of the Irtysh River, which ultimately drains into the Arctic Ocean. The rest of the region is split into a number of Indorheic basins. In particular, south of the Irtysh, the Alunga River ends up in the Indorheic Lake Alunga. The southwestern part of the Zongarian Basin drains into the Ibi Lake. In the west central part of the region, streams flow into a group of Indorheic lakes that include Lake Manas and Lake Ilik. During the region's geological past, a much larger lake was located in the area of today's Manas Lake. It was fed not only by the streams that presently flow toward it, but also by the Irtysh and Alunga, which too were flowing toward the old Manas Lake at the time. The cold climate of nearby Siberia influences the climate of the Dzungarian Basin, making the temperature colder a euro as low as a 4 AA degree for euro, and providing more precipitation, ranging from 3 to 10 inches, compared to the warmer, drier basins to the south. Runoff from the surrounding mountains into the basin supplies several lakes. The ecologically rich habitats traditionally included meadows, marshlands, and rivers. However most of the land is now used for agriculture. It is a largely steppe and semi-desert basin surrounded by high mountains, the Tian Shan in the south and the Altai in the north. Geologically it is an extension of the Paleozoic Kazakhstan block and was once part of an independent continent before the Altai Mountains formed in the late Paleozoic. It does not contain the abundant minerals of Kazakhstan and may have been a pre-existing continental block before the Kazakhstan block was formed. Aero 1 quarter MQI, Yining and Karame are the main cities. Other smaller oasis towns dot the Piedmont areas. Paleontology, Zungaria and its derivatives are used to name a number of prehistoric animals hailing from the rocky outcrops located in an eponymous sedimentary basin of that region, the Chungar Basin. Sungaripterus way, Jungasucha sloni, a recent notable find, in February 2006, is the oldest Tyrannosaur fossil unearthed by a team of scientists from George Washington University who were conducting a study in the Dzungarian Basin. The species, named Guan Long, lived 160 million years ago, more than 90 million years before the famed Tyrannosaurus rex. Ecology Dzungaria is home to a semi-desert steppe region known as the Dzungarian Basin Semi-Desert. The vegetation consists mostly of low scrub of Anabasis brevifolia. Tallish shrublands of Sakshul Bush and Ephedrapta Walskia can be found near the margins of the basin. Streams descending from the Tian Shan and Altai Ranges support stands of poplar together with Nitraria roborovski, N. Sibirica, Acnotherum splendens, Tamarisk, and Willow. The northeastern portion of the Dzungarian Basin semi desert lies within Great Gobi National Park and is home to herds of onagers, goitered gazelles, and wild Bactrian camels. The basin was one of the last habitats of Tsawalski's horse, which is now extinct in the wild. History One of the earliest mentions of the Dzungaria region occurs when the Han Dynasty dispatched an explorer to investigate lands to the west, using the northernmost Silk Road trackway of about 2,600 kilometers in length, which connected the ancient Chinese capital of Xi'an to the west over the Ashaoling Pass to Wuwei and emerged in Kashgar. Is to currency me of the Gar paragraph KTA 1 quarter AKS received the lands of Zungaria as an inheritance after the death of his father in the latter half of the 6th century AD. Zungaria is named after a Mongolian kingdom which existed in Central Asia during the 17th and 18th centuries. It derived its name from the Dzungars, who were so called because they formed the left wing of the Mongolian army, self named Orats. Zongar power reached its height in the second half of the 17th century, when Kolden, repeatedly intervened in the affairs of the Kazakhs to the west, but it was completely destroyed by the Kazakhs about 1757 a Euro 1759. It has played an important part in the history of Mongolia and the great migrations of Mongolian stems westward. After 1761, its territory fell mostly to the Qing dynasty during the campaign against the Zungars and partly to Russian Turkestan. Its widest limit included Kashgar, Yarkand, Khotan, the whole region of the Tian Shan, and the greater proportion of that part of Central Asia which extends from 35 a degree to 50 a degree N and from 72 a degree to 97 a degree E. 
as a political or geographical term Zungaria has practically disappeared from the map. But the range of mountains stretching northeast along the southern frontier of the Gtsu, as the district to the southeast of Lake Balkash preserves the name of Zungarian Alitau. It also gave name to Zungarian hamsters. Zungaria and the Silk Road, a traveler going west from China must go either north of the Tian Shan Mountains through Zungaria or south of the mountains through the Tarim Basin. Trade usually took the south side and migrations the north. This is most likely because the Tarim leads to the Fergana Valley and Iran, while Zungaria leads only to the open steppe. The difficulty with south side was the high mountains between the Tarim and Fergana. There is also another reason. The Taklamakan is too dry to support much grass, and therefore nomads when they are not robbing caravans. Its inhabitants live mostly in oases formed where rivers run out of the mountains into the desert. These are inhabited by peasants who are unwarlike and merchants who have an interest in keeping trade running smoothly. Zungaria has a fair amount of grass, few towns to base soldiers in and no significant mountain barriers to the west. Therefore trade went south and migrations north. Zungar Genocide The Zungar, or Arab Mongols who lived in an area that stretched from the west end of the Great Wall of China to present-day eastern Kazakhstan and from present-day northern Kyrgyzstan to southern Siberia, were the last nomadic empire to threaten China, which they did from the early 17th century through the middle of the 18th century. After a series of inconclusive military conflicts that started in the 1680s, the Dzungas were subjugated by the Manchu-led Qing dynasty in the late 1750s. Clark argued that the Qing campaign in 1757 a Euro 58 amounted to the complete destruction of not only the Dzungar state but of the Dzungars as a people. After the Qianlong Emperor led Qing forces to victory over the Dzungar Oyurid Mongols in 1755, his original plan was to split the Zungar Empire into four tribes headed by four Khans. The Kwa tribe was to have the Zungar leader Ama Sana as its Khan. Ama Sana rejected the Qing arrangement and rebelled since he wanted to be leader of a united Zungar nation. Qianlong then issued orders for the genocide and eradication of the entire Zungar nation and name, Qing Manchu Bannermen and Korkor Mongols enslaved Zungar women and children while slaying the others. The Qianlong Emperor issued direct orders for his commanders to massacre the Dzungars and show no mercy. Rewards were given to those who carried out the extermination and orders were given for young men to be slaughtered while women were taken as spoils. The Qing extirpated the Dzungar identity from the remaining enslaved Dzungar women and children. Orders were given to completely exterminate the Dzungar tribes and this successful genocide by the Qing resulted in the almost complete depopulation of Dzungaria. Qianlong ordered his men to show no mercy at all to these rebels. Only the old and weak should be saved. Our previous campaigns were too lenient. The Qianlong Emperor did not see any conflict between inflicting genocide on the Dzungars while upholding the peaceful principles of Confucianism. He supported his position by portraying the Dzungars as barbarian and subhuman. Qianlong proclaimed that to sweep away barbarians is the way to bring stability to the interior. That the Dzungars turned their back on civilization. And that heaven supported the emperor. In the destruction of the Dzungars. According to the Encyclopedia of Genocide and Crimes Against Humanity, Volume 3, per the United Nations Genocide Convention Article 2, Qianlong's actions against the Dzungars constitute genocide as he massacred the vast majority of the population and enslaved or banished the remainder, while Dzungar culture was extirpated and destroyed. Qianlong's campaign constituted the 18th century genocide par excellence. The Qianlong emperor relocated the remaining Dzungar people to China and ordered his generals to kill all the men in Barkalosht so then divide their wives and children amongst the Qing soldiers. In an account of the war, Qing scholar Wei Yuan, wrote that about 40% of the Dzungar households were killed by smallpox, 20% fled to Russia or the Kazakh Khanate, and 30% were killed by the army, leaving no yurts in an area of several thousands of Li except those of the surrendered. Clark wrote 80%, or between 480,000 and 600,000 people, 
were killed between 1755 and 1758 in what amounted to the complete destruction of not only the Zungar state but of the Zungars as a people. 80% of the Zungars died in the genocide. The Zungar genocide was completed by a combination of a smallpox epidemic and the direct slaughter of Zungars by Qing forces made out of Manchu Bannermen and Mongols. Anti Zungar Uka rebels from the Turfan and Hami oases had submitted to Qing rule as vassals and requested Qing help for overthrowing Zungar rule. Uka leaders like Amin Koja were granted titles within the Qing nobility, and these Ugas helped supply the Qing military forces during the anti Zungar campaign. The Qing employed Koja Amin in its campaign against the Zungars and used him as an intermediary with Muslims from the Tarim Basin to inform them that the Qing were only aiming to kill Orats and that they would leave the Muslims alone, and also to convince them to kill the Orats themselves and side with the Qing since the Qing noted the Muslims' resentment of their former experience under Zungar rule at the hands of Tsvangaraptan. It was not until generations later that Zungaria rebounded from the destruction and near liquidation of the Zungars after the mass slayings of nearly a million Zungars. Historian Peter Perdue has shown that the decimation of the Zungars was the result of an explicit policy of extermination launched by Qianlong. Perdue attributed the decimation of the Zungars to a deliberate use of massacre, and has described it as an ethnic genocide. Although this deliberate use of massacre has been largely ignored by modern scholars, Dr. Mark Levin, a historian whose recent research interests focus on genocide, has stated that the extermination of the Dzungas was arguably the 18th century genocide par excellence. The Dzungar genocide has been compared to the Qing extermination of the Jinchuan Tibetan people in 1776. Demographic changes due to the genocide, the Qing's final solution a euro solving the problem of the Dzungar Mongols through genocide a euro facilitated the Qing-sponsored settlement of millions of Han Chinese, Hui, Turkestani Oasis people and Manchu Bannermen in Dzungaria, since the land was now devoid of Dzungars. The Dzungarian Basin, previously inhabited by Mongols, is currently inhabited by Kazakhs. In northern Xinjiang, the Qing brought in Han, Hui, Uga, Ksaib, and Kazakh colonists after they exterminated the Zungar Oirat Mongols in the region. One third of Xinjiang's total population thereafter consisted of Hui and Han people in the northern area, while in southern Xinjiang's Tarim Basin around two thirds were Uggars. In Zungaria, the Qing established new cities including Uramki and Yining. The Qing were the ones who unified Xinjiang and changed its demographic situation. The depopulation of northern Xinjiang after the Buddhist AA paragraph La Paragraph D Mongols were slaughtered, led to the Qing settling Manchu, Sibo, Dawes, Solons, Han Chinese, Hui Muslims, and Turkic Muslim Tarankis in the north, with Han Chinese and Hui migrants making up the greatest number of settlers. Since it was the crashing of the Buddhist AA paragraph La Paragraph D by the Qing which led to promotion of Islam and the empowerment of the Muslim Begs in southern Xinjiang, and migration of Muslim Tarankis to northern Xinjiang, it was proposed by Henry Schwartz that the Qing victory was, in a certain sense, a victory for Islam. Xinjiang was a unified defined geographic identity was created and developed by the Qing. It was the Qing who led to Turkic Muslim power in the region increasing since the Mongol power was crushed by the Qing while Turkic Muslim culture and identity was tolerated or even promoted by the Qing. Qing rule, the Qing identified their state as China, and referred to it as Dulim by Guan in Manchu. The dynasty equated their state lands as China in both the Chinese and Manchu languages, defining the country as a multi-ethnic state. The Qianlong Emperor explicitly commemorated the Qing conquest of the Dzungars as having added new territory in Xinjiang I one quarter literally new frontiers to China, defining China as a multi-ethnic state while rejecting the idea that China meant only the Han areas of China proper. As a result, according to the Qing, both Han and non-Han peoples were part of China, which included Xinjiang which the Qing conquered from the Dzungars. After the Qing completed their conquest of Dzungaria in 1759, they proclaimed that the new land which formerly belonged to the Dzungars, 
was now absorbed into China in a Manchu language memorial. The QING expanded on their ideology of bringing together the outer non Han Chinese, including the Inner Mongols, Eastern Mongols, Oirat Mongols, and Tibetans, together with the Inner Han Chinese, into one family united in the QING state, showing that the diverse subjects of the QING were all part of one family. The QING used the phrase Zong Yijia a currency a euro a or Nai Yijia Pascal currency a euro a to convey this idea of unification of the different peoples. After the defeat of the Tsungas, the QING made members of a clan of Sufi Saikhs known as the Kodjas, rulers in the western Tarim Basin, south of the Tainshan Mountains. In 1758 Euro 59, however, rebellions against this arrangement broke out both north and south of the Tian Shan Mountains. The QING were then forced, contrary to their initial intent, to establish a form of direct military rule over Dzungaria and the Tarim Basin. The Manchus put the whole region under the rule of the General Abili, who established a center of government at the fort of Huiyuan, 30 km west of Yulja. The Qing dynasty Kanlong Emperor conquered the Dzungarian plateau in the Tarim Basin, bringing the two separate regions, respectively north and south of the Tianshan Mountains, under his rule as Xinjiang. The south was inhabited by Turkic Muslims and the north by Jung'ar Mongols. The Dzungars were also called Aluths, or Kalmyks. After 1759 state farms were established, especially in the vicinity of Urumqi, where there was fertile well-watered land and few people. From 1760 to 1830 more state farms were opened and the Chinese population in Xinjiang grew rapidly to about 155,000. The QING identified their state as China, and referred to it as Dulim by Guan in Manchu. The QING equated the lands of the QING state, including present-day Manchuria, Zungaria in Xinjiang, Mongolia, and other areas as China in both the Chinese and Manchu languages, defining China as a multi-ethnic state. When the QING conquered Zungaria, they proclaimed that the new land was absorbed into China. Xinjiang at this time did not exist as one unit. It consisted of the two separate political entities of Zungaria and the Tarim Basin. Zungaria or Illy was called Sunbuyi Florentine Chin Bay Luaa plus or minus plus or minus or e. Xinjiang E degree Celsius, Zungri, Juangaria, Sungaria, or Kamikia. It was formerly the area of the Zung Arcanity unregistered trademark paragraph C three quarters E plus or minus, or, the land of the Dzungaroyrat Mongols. The Tarim Basin was known as Tainchen and Luaa plus or minus plus or minus A, E, Haibuae Florin, Hujiang A C, Chinese Turkestan, Kashgaria. Little Bukharia, East Turkestan, and the traditional Uga name for it was Altisha. It was formerly the area of the Eastern Shagatai Khanate plus or minus a year degree plus or minus, or, land of the Uga people before being conquered by the Dzungas. The Chinese repository said that, neither the natives nor the Chinese appear to have any general name to designate the Mohammedan colonies. They are called Kashgar, Boka Ra, Chinese Turkestan, and C by foreigners, none of which seem to be very appropriate. They have also been called Jagatai, after a son of Genghis Khan, to whom this country fell as his portion after his father a Euro unregistered trademark s death, and be included all the eight Mohammedan cities, with some of the surrounding countries, in one kingdom. It is said to have remained in this family, with some interruptions, until conquered by the Aleuths of Sungaria in 1683. Between Yuguan's west and Urumqi's east, an area of Xinjiang was also designated as Tianchen Don Blue AA plus or minus plus or minus E plus or minus E. After Qing dynasty defeated the Dzungar Zoyrat Mongols and exterminated them from their native land of Dzungaria in the Dzungar genocide, the Qing settled Han, Hui, Manchus, Xib, and Tarankis from the Tarim Basin, into Dzungaria. Han Chinese criminals and political exiles were exiled to Dzungaria, such as Lin Zegzu. Chinese Hui Muslims and Sailor Muslims belonging to banned Sufi orders like the Jaraya were also exiled to Dzungaria as well. In the aftermath of the crashing of the 1781 Jaraya rebellion, Jaraya adherents were exiled. 
the Qing enacted different policies for different areas of Xinjiang. Han and Hui migrants were urged by the Qing government to settle in Xinjiang area in northern Xinjiang, while they were not allowed in southern Xinjiang's Tarim Basin oases with the exception of Han and Hui merchants. In areas where more Han Chinese settled like in Xinjiang area, the Qing used a Chinese-style administrative system. The Manchu Qing ordered the settlement of thousands of Han Chinese peasants in Xinjiang after 1760. The peasants originally came from Gansu and were given animals, seeds, and tools as they were being settled in the area, for the purpose of making Chinese rule in the region permanent and a fait accompli. Taranchai was the name for Turkey agriculturalists who were resettled in Tungaria from the Tarim Basin oases by the Qing dynasty, along with Manchus, Xibo, Solons, Han and other ethnic groups in the aftermath of the destruction of the Tsuingas. Kuldra was a key area subjected to the Qing settlement of these different ethnic groups into military colonies. The Manchu garrisons were supplied and supported with grain cultivated by the Han soldiers and East Turkestani who were resettled in agricultural colonies in Zungaraya. The Manchu Qing policy of settling Chinese colonists and Tarankis from the Tarim Basin on the former Kalmak's land was described as having the land swarmed with the settlers. The amount of Ukas moved by Qing from Alta currency Sha currency Ha currency are to depopulate its Ungar land in Ili numbered around 10,000 families. The amount of Ukas moved by Qing into Jungaraya at this time has been described as large. The Qing settled in Zungaria even more Turkey to Ranchai numbering around 12,000 families originating from Kashgar in the aftermath of the Jauhangakoju invasion in the 1820s. Standard Uggur is based on the Duranchai dialect, which was chosen by the Chinese government for this role. Sailor migrants from Amdo came to settle the region as religious exiles, migrants, and as soldiers enlisted in the Chinese army to fight Tunili, a fen following the Hui. After a revolt by the Ksai Ban in 1764, the Kalenlong Emperor ordered an 800 man military escort to transfer 18,000 Ksai to the Ili Valley of Zungaria in Xinjiang. In Ili, the Xinjiang Xi built Buddhist monasteries and cultivated vegetables, tobacco, and poppies. One punishment for Bannermen for their misdeeds involved them being exiled to Xinjiang. In 1765, 300,000 Qing of land in Xinjiang were turned into military colonies, as Chinese settlement expanded to keep up with China's population growth. The Qing resorted to incentives like issuing a subsidy which was paid to Han who were willing to migrate to northwest to Xinjiang, in a 1776 edict. There were very little Uggurs in Uromqi during the Qing dynasty, Uromqi was mostly Han and Hui, and Han and Hui settlers were concentrated in northern Xinjiang. Around 155,000 Han and Hui lived in Xinjiang, mostly in Zungaria around 1803 and around 320,000 Uggurs, living mostly in southern Xinjiang, as Han and Hui were allowed to settle in Zungaria but forbidden to settle in the Tarim, while the small amount of Uggurs living in Zungaria and Uromqi was insignificant. Hans were around one-third of Xinjiang's population at 1800, during the time of the Qing dynasty. Spirits were introduced during the settlement of northern Xinjiang by Han Chinese flooding into the area. The Qing made a special case in allowing northern Xinjiang to be settled by Han, since they usually did not allow frontier regions to be settled by Han migrants. This policy led to 200,000 Han and Hui settlers in northern Xinjiang when the 18th century came to a close, in addition to military colonies settled by Han called Bingtan. Professor of Chinese and Central Asian History at Georgetown University James A. Millwood wrote that foreigners often mistakenly think that Uramki was originally a Uyghur city and that the Chinese destroyed its Uyghur character and culture, however, Uramki was founded as a Chinese city by Han and Hui, and it is the Uyghurs who are new to the city. Han and Hui merchants were initially only allowed to trade in the Tarim Basin, while Han and Hui settlement in the Tarim Basin was banned, until the Muhammad Yusuf Koju invasion. In 1830 when the Qing rewarded the merchants for fighting off Koja by allowing them to settle down permanently, however, few of them actually took up on the offer. Robert Michael noted that as of 1870, there were many Chinese of all occupations living in Zungaria and they were well settled in the area, 
while in Turkestan there were only a few Chinese merchants and soldiers and several garrisons among the Muslim population. At the start of the 19th century, 40 years after the Qing reconquest, there were around 155,000 Han and Hui Chinese in northern Xinjiang and somewhat more than twice that number of Uyghurs in southern Xinjiang. A census of Xinjiang under Qing rule in the early 19th century tabulated ethnic shares of the population as 30% Han and 60% Turkic, while it dramatically shifted to 6% Han and 75% Uyghur in the 1953 census. However a situation similar to the QING era demographics with a large number of Han has been restored as of 2000 with 40.57% Han and 45.21% Uyghur. Professor Stanley W. Toops noted that today's demographic situation is similar to that of the early QING period in Xinjiang. Before 1831 only a few hundred Chinese merchants lived in southern Xinjiang oases and only a few Uyghurs lived in northern Xinjiang. In 1884 AA Euro, or, according to some sources, 1882 AA Euro the Qing dynasty established Xinjiang as a province, formally applying to it the political systems of the rest of China and dropping the old names of Tsunbui Florin and Hujiang, Muslim land. The two separate regions, Zungaria, Known as Tsunbuili Florin or Tainchen Bay Luaa plus or minus plus or minus or, e, and the Tarim Basin, which had been known as Altis Ha, Haibu, Hujiang or Tainchen and Luaa plus or minus plus or minus a, e, were combined into a single province called Xinjiang by in 1884. Before this, there was never one administrative unit in which North Xinjiang and Southern Xinjiang were integrated together. A lot of the Han Chinese and Chinese Hui Muslim population who had previously settled northern Xinjiang after the Qing genocide of the Dzungas, had died in the Dungan Revolt. As a result, new Uyghur colonists from southern Xinjiang proceeded to settle in the newly empty lands and spread across all of Xinjiang. After Xinjiang was converted into a province by the Qing, the provincialization and reconstruction programs initiated by the QING resulted in the Chinese government helping Uyghurs migrate from southern Xinjiang to other areas of the province, like the area between Kitai and the capital, which was formerly nearly completely inhabited by Han Chinese, and other areas like Yuramki, Takeng, Ayalai, Jingyi, Kirkara Yusu, Rawakiang, Lop Nor, and the Tarim River's lower reaches. It was during Qing times that Uyghurs were settled throughout all of Xinjiang, from their original home cities in the western Tarim Basin. The Qing policies after they created Xinjiang by uniting Zongaraya and Altisha led Uyghurs to believe that the all of Xinjiang province was their homeland, since the inhalation of the Zungars by the Qing, populating the Ili Valley with Uyghurs from the Tarim Basin creating one political unit with a single name out of the previously separate Zungaraya and the Tarim Basin, the war from 1864 to 1878 which led to the killing of much of the original Han Chinese and Chinese Hui Muslims in Xinjiang, led to areas in Xinjiang with previously had insignificant amounts of Uyghurs, like the southeast, east, and north, to then become settled by Uyghurs who spread through all of Xinjiang from their original home in the southwest area. There was a major and fast growth of the Uyghur population, while the original population of Han Chinese and Hui Muslims from before the war of 155,000 dropped, to the much lower population of 33,114 Tungans and 66,000 Han. A regionalist-style nationalism was fostered by the Han Chinese officials who came to rule Xinjiang after its conversion into a province by the Qing. It was from this ideology that the later East Turkestani nationalists appropriated their sense of nationalism centered around Xinjiang as a clearly defined geographic territory. 1949 A Euro Present Uyghur nationalists often incorrectly claim that 5% of Xinjiang's population in 1949 was Han, and that the other 95% was Uyghur, erasing the presence of Kazakhs, Ksibes, and others and ignoring the fact that ants were around one-third of Xinjiang's population at 1800, during the time of the Qing dynasty. The autonomous region of the PRC was established on October 1, 1955, replacing the province. In 1955, 
Uyghurs were counted as 73% of Xinjiang's total population of 5.11 million. Although Xinjiang as a whole is designated as a Uyghur autonomous region, since 1954 more than 50% of Xinjiang's land area are designated autonomous areas for 13 native non-Uyghur groups. The modern Uyghur people experienced ethnogenesis especially from 1955, when the PRC officially recognized that ethnic category, in opposition to the Han, of formerly separately self-identified oasis peoples. The People's Republic of China has directed the majority of Han migrants in Xinjiang towards the sparsely populated Dzung area. Before 1953 most of Xinjiang's population lived in the Tarim Basin, so the new Han migrants resulted in the distribution of population between Dzung area and the Tarim being changed. Most new Chinese migrants ended up in the northern region, in Dzung area. Han and Hui made up the majority of the population in Dzungaria's cities while Uyghurs made up most of the population in Kashgaria's cities. Eastern and central Dzungaria are the specific areas where these Han and Hui are concentrated. China made sure that new Han migrants were settled in entirely new areas uninhabited by Uyghurs so as to not disturb the already existing Uyghur communities. Lars Erik Naman noted that Kashgaria was the native land of the Uyghurs, but a migration has been in progress to Dzungaria since the 18th century. Both Han economic migrants from other parts of China and Uyghur economic migrants from southern Xinjiang have been flooding into northern Xinjiang since the 1980s. Southern Xinjiang is where the majority of the Uyghur population resides, while it is in northern Xinjiang cities where the majority of the Han population of Xinjiang reside. Southern Xinjiang is dominated by its 9 million Uyghur majority population, while northern Xinjiang is where the mostly urban Han population holds sway. This situation has been followed by an imbalance in the economic situation between the two ethnic groups, since the northern Jungar Basin has been more developed than the Uyghur South. From the 1950s to 1970s, 92% of migrants to Xinjiang were Han and 8% were Hui. Most of these migrants were unorganized settlers as, they're still now, coming from neighboring Gansu province to seek trading opportunities. Beginning in the 1960s, the Soviet Union incited separatist activities in Xinjiang through propaganda, encouraging Kazakhs to flee to the Soviet Union and attacking China. China responded by reinforcing the Xinjiang-Soviet border area specifically with Han Bingtuan militia and farmers. The Soviets massively intensified their broadcasts inciting Uyghurs to revolt against the Chinese via Radio Tashkent since 1967 and directly harbored and supported separatist guerrilla fighters to attack the Chinese border. In 1966 the amount of Soviet-sponsored separatist attacks on China numbered 5,000. The Soviets transmitted a radio broadcast from Radio Tashkent into Xinjiang on May 14, 1967 boasting of the fact that the Soviets had supported the Second East Turkestan Republic against China. In addition to Radio Tashkent, other Soviet media outlets aimed at disseminating propaganda towards Uyghurs urging that they proclaim independence and revolt against China included Radio Almaty and the Almaty published Shrikita one quarter Rukistan of AZ newspaper. After the Sino-Soviet split in 1962, over 60,000 Uyghurs and Kazakhs defected from Xinjiang to the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic, in response to Soviet propaganda which promised Xinjiang independence. Uyghur exiles later threatened China with rumors of a Uyghur Liberation Army in the thousands that were supposedly recruited from Sovietized emigres. The Soviet Union was involved in funding and support to the East Turkestan People's Revolutionary Party the largest militant Uyghur separatist organization in its time, to start a violent uprising against China in 1968. In the 1970s, the Soviets also supported the United Revolutionary Front of East Turkestan to fight against the Chinese. Bloody incidents in 1966-67 flared up as Chinese and Soviet forces clashed along the border as the Soviets trained anti-Chinese guerrillas and urged Uyghurs to revolt against China hailing their national liberation struggle. In 1969, Chinese and Soviet forces directly fought each other along the Xinjiang-Soviet border. The Soviet Union supported Uyghur nationalist propaganda and Uyghur separatist movements against China. 
The Soviet historians claimed that the Uyghur native land was Xinjiang and Uyghur nationalism was promoted by Soviet versions of history on Tokology. Soviet tokologists like D. I. Tai Kerner wrote pro independence works on Uyghur history, and the Soviet supported Uyghur historian Tsun Rakhimov wrote more historical works supporting Uyghur independence and attacking the Chinese government, claiming that Xinjiang was an entity created by China made out of the different parts of East Turkestan and Zungaria. These Soviet Uyghur historians were waging an ideological war against China, emphasizing the national liberation movement of Uyghurs throughout history. The Soviet Communist Party supported the publication of works which glorified the Second East Turkestan Republic and the Uli Rebellion against China in its anti-China propaganda war. Soviet propaganda writers wrote works claiming that Uyghurs lived better lives and were able to practice their culture only in Soviet Central Asia and not in Xinjiang. In 1979 Soviet KGB agent Viktor Louis wrote a thesis claiming that the Soviets should support a war of liberation against the Imperial China to support Uyghur, Tibetan, Mongol, and Manchu independence. The Soviet KGB itself supported Uyghur separatists against China. Uyghur nationalist historian Turgun Almaz and his book Uyghurla and Uyghur nationalist accounts of history were galvanized by Soviet stances on history, firmly grounded in Soviet Turkological works, and both heavily influenced and partially created by Soviet historians and Soviet works on Turkic peoples. Soviet historiography spawned the rendering of Uyghur history found in Uyghurla. Almaz claimed that Central Asia was the motherland of the Uyghurs, and also the ancient golden cradle of world culture. Xinjiang's importance to China increased after the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, leading to China's perception of being encircled by the Soviets. The China supported the Afghan Mujahideen during the Soviet invasion, and broadcast reports of Soviet atrocities on Afghan Muslims to Uyghurs in order to counter Soviet propaganda broadcasts into Xinjiang which boasted that Soviet minorities lived better and incited Muslims to revolt. Chinese radio beamed anti-Soviet broadcasts to Central Asian ethnic minorities like the Kazakhs. The Soviets feared disloyalty among the non-Russian Kazakh, Uzbek, and Kyrgyz in the event of Chinese troops attacking the Soviet Union and entering Central Asia. Russians were goaded with the taunt just wait till the Chinese get here, they'll show you what's what by Central Asians when they had altercations. The Chinese authorities viewed the Han migrants in Xinjiang as vital to defending the area against the Soviet Union. China opened up camps to train the Afghan Mujahideen near Kashgar and Khotan and supplied them with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of small arms, rockets, mines, and anti-tank weapons. Since the Chinese economic reform from the late 1970s has exacerbated uneven regional development, more Uyghurs have migrated to Xinjiang cities and some Hans have also migrated to Xinjiang for independent economic advancement. Increased ethnic contact and labor competition coincided with Uyghur separatist terrorism from the 1990s, such as the 1997 Aira one-quarter MQI bus bombings. In the 1980s, 90% of Xinjiang Han lived in North Xinjiang. In the mid-1990s, Uyghurs consisted of 90% of South Xinjiang's population. In 1980, the liberal reformist Hu Yangbang announced the expulsion of ethnic Han cadres in Xinjiang to eastern China. Hu was purged in 1987 for a series of demonstrations that he is said to have provoked in other areas of China. The prominent Xinjiang and national official Wang Tsen criticized Hu for destroying Xinjiang Han cadres' sense of security and for exacerbating ethnic tensions. In the 1990s, there was a net inflow of Han people to Xinjiang, many of whom were previously prevented from moving because of the declining number of social services tied to Hukou. As of 1996, 13.6% of Xinjiang's population was employed by the publicly traded Xinjiang Production and Construction Corps Corporation. 90% of the Bingtuan's activities relate to agriculture, and and 88% of Bingtuan employees are Han, although the percentage of Hans with ties to the Bingtuan has decreased. Han emigration from Xinjiang has also resulted in an increase of minority-identified agricultural workers as a total percentage of Xinjiang's farmers, from 69.4% in 1982 to 76.7% in 1990. 
During the 1990s, about 1.2 million temporary migrants entered Xinjiang every year to stay for the cotton picking season. Many Uyghur trading communities exist outside of Xinjiang. The largest in Beijing is one village of a few thousand. A chain of aggressive and belligerent press releases in the 1990s making false claims about violent insurrections in Xinjiang, and exaggerating both the number of Chinese migrants and the total number of Uyghurs in Xinjiang were made by the former Soviet-supported URFET leader Yasubek Mukhlisi. In 2000, Uyghurs comprised 45% of Xinjiang's population, but only 12.8% of Uyamki's population. Despite having 9% of Xinjiang's population, Uyamki accounts for 25% of the region's GDP, and many rural Uyghurs have been migrating to that city to seek work in the dominant light, heavy, and petrochemical industries. Hans in Xinjiang are demographically older, better educated and work in higher paying professions than their Uyghur cohabitants. Hans are more likely to cite business reasons for moving to Yuramki, while some Uyghurs also cite trouble with the law back home and family reasons for their moving to Yuramki. Hans and Uyghurs are equally represented in Yuramki's floating population that works mostly in commerce. Self-segregation within the city is widespread, in terms of residential concentration, employment relationships, and a social norm of endogamy. As of 2010, Uyghurs constitute a majority in the Tarim Basin, and a mere plurality in Xinjiang as a whole. Han and Hui mostly live in northern Xinjiang, and are separated from areas of historical Uyghur dominance south of the Tian Shan Mountains, where Uyghurs account for about 90% of the population. People The Dzongar or at Mongols who lived in an area that stretched from the west end of the Great Wall of China to present-day eastern Kazakhstan and from present-day northern Kyrgyzstan to southern Siberia, were the last nomadic empire to threaten China, which they did from the early 17th century to the middle of the 18th century. After a series of inconclusive military conflicts that started in the 1680s, the Dzungas were subjugated by the Manchu-led Qing dynasty in the late 1750s and subjected to the Dzungar genocide at the hands of the Qing. According to Qing scholar Wei Yuan, 40% of the 600,000 Dzungar people were killed by smallpox, 20% fled to Russia or sought refuge among the Kazakh tribes, and 30% were killed by the army. Clark has argued that the QING campaign in 1757 Euro 58 amounted to the complete destruction of not only the Dzungar state but of the Dzungars as a people. Historian Peter Perdue has attributed the decimation of the Dzungars to a deliberate use of massacre, and has described it as an ethnic genocide. Mark Levin, a historian whose recent research interests focus on genocide, has stated that the extermination of the Dzungas was arguably the 18th century genocide par excellence. The Qing subsequently began to repopulate the area with Turkey people from the south. The population in the 21st century consists of Kazakhs, Kaijais, Mongols, Uyghurs, and Han Chinese. Since 1953, northern Xinjiang has attracted skilled workers from all over China Euro who have mostly been Han China Sea Euro to work on water conservation and industrial projects, especially the Karamei oil fields. Intraprovincial migration has mostly been directed towards Dzungaria also, with immigrants from the poor Uyghur areas of southern Xinjiang flooding to the provincial capital of Iera one quarter MQI to find work. Economy, wheat, barley, oats, and sugar beets are grown, and cattle, sheep, and horses are raised. The fields are irrigated with melted snow from the permanently white-capped mountains. Zungaria has deposits of coal, iron, and gold, as well as large oil fields. References Bovingdon, Gardner, The Uggers, Strangers in Their Own Land, Columbia University Press, ISBN A0231519419 or, Hopper, Ben. Weber, Michael, Migration. Modernization and Ethnic Estrangement, Uyghur Migration to Yuramki, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, PRC 11, Global Oriental Limited, PPA 173 Euro 203 Southman, Barry, is Xinjiang an internal colony? In Eurasia 2, 239 Euro 271 Q, Yuan Yao, 
EXC Xia 1 half AA 01 quarter Xia degree Celsius A, China's population across the centuries, Xinjiang volume, Beijing, A 1 half CEAC per mil Xia, the Encyclopedia Britannica, a Dictionary of Arts, Sciences, and General Literature, Volume 23. Maxwell So Merville. 1894. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Harvard Asia Quarterly, Volume 9. Harvard University. Asia Center, Harvard Asia Law Society, Harvard Asia Business Club, Asia at the Graduate School of Design. Harvard Asia Law Society, Harvard Asia Business Club, and Asia at the Graduate School of Design. 2005. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Linguistic Typology, Volume 2. Association for Linguistic Typology. Mouton de Guida 1998. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Journal of the North China Branch of the Royal Asiatic Society, Volume 10. Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland. North China Branch. Shanair printed at the Celestial Empire Office 10 Hanko Road 10 The Branch. 1876. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland. North China Branch. Shanghai. Journal of the North China Branch of the Royal Asiatic Society, Volume 10. Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland. North China Branch. Shanair printed at the Celestial Empire Office 10 Hanko Road 10 Kelly and Walsh. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Great Britain. Parliament. House of Commons. Parliamentary Papers, House of Commons and Command. Volume 51. HM Stationery Office. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Great Britain. Parliament. House of Commons. Papers by Command. Volume 101. HM Stationery Office. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Great Britain. Foreign Office. Historical Section. George Walter Prothero. Handbooks prepared under the direction of the Historical Section of the Foreign Office, Issue 67-74. HM Stationery Office. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Great Britain. Foreign Office. Historical Section. George Walter Prothero, ed. China, Japan, Siam. Volume 12 of Peace Handbooks, Great Britain. Foreign Office. Historical Section. ISBN A0842017046. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Ethnological Information on China. Volume 16. Volume 620 of JPRSCCM Information Corporation. 196. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Bella Copyright I Han, Ildikar Cubed, Ed Situating the Uggers Between China and Central Asia. Ashgate Publishing, Ltd. ISBN A0754670414. ISNA 1759-5290. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Burns, John F. on Soviet-China border, the thaw is just a trickle. The New York Times. Retrieved May 12, 2014. A, Brett Schneider, E. Notices of the Media Val Geography and History of Central and Western Asia. Tra 1 quarter BNER and Company. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Bridge Man, Elijah Coleman. Williams, Samuel Wells. The Chinese Repository. Meiyuzan Kabashiki Kesha. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, the Chinese Repository, Volume 5. Krauss Reprint 1837. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Britannica Educational Publishing. The Geography of China, Sacred and Historic Places. Britannica Educational Publishing. ISBN A 1615301828. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Britannica Educational Publishing. The Geography of China, Sacred and Historic Places. The Rosen Publishing Group. ISBN A 1615301348. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, Victor C. Falkenheim. Xinjiang, 
Britannica Online Encyclopedia. Britannica.com. PA2. Retrieved April 16, 2014. A. Benson, Linda. Svanberg, and Vasi China's Last Nomads, The History and Culture of China's Kazakhs. Emmy Sharp. ISBN A 1563247828. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Clark, My Colleagues in Jiang and China's Rise in Central Asia, A History. Taylor and Francis. ISBN A 1136827064. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Clark, Michael Edmund. In the Eye of Power, China and Xinjiang from the Qing Conquest to the New Great Game for Central Asia, 1759 Euro 2004. Griffith University, Brisbane, Department of International Business and Asian Studies A. Crow, David M. War Crimes, Genocide, and Justice, A Global History. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN A 1137037016. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Dunnell, Ruth W. Elliott, Mark C. Forrett, Philippe. Minwood, James A. New Qing Imperial History, The Making of Inner Asian Empire at Qing Xingde. Routledge. ISBN A 1134362226. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A debater, Rush Ranjan. China's Minorities, Ethnic Religious Separatism in Xinjiang. Central Asian Studies Program. Pentagon Press. ISBN A 8182743257. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Dickens, Mark. The Soviets in Xinjiang, 1911 to 1949. Oxus Communications. Retrieved May 12, 2014. A. Dylan, Michael. Contemporary China: An Introduction. Routledge. ISBN A 1134290543. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Dylan. Michael. Xinjiang, Chinese Muslim Far Northwest. Routledge. ISBN A 1134360967. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Dwyer, Ariane M. Saylor, A Study in Inner Asian Language Contact Processes, Part 1. Otto Harasovitz Verlag. ISBN A 3447040912. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Elliot, Mark C. The Manchu Way, The Eight Banners and Ethnic Identity in Late Imperial China. Stanford University Press. ISBN A 0804746842. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Fairbank, John K., Ed. The Cambridge History of China, Volume 10. Late Qing 1800-1911, Part 1. Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 0521214475. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Fisher, Richard Swainson. The Book of the World, Volume 2. J. H. Colton. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Forbes, Andrew D. W. Warlords and Muslims in Chinese Central Asia. A Political History of Republicans in Kyang 1911-1949. Cup Archive. ISBN A0521255147. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Garnalt, Antony. From Yunnan to Xinjiang, a Governor Yang Zingxin and his Dungan Generals. Etudes Orientals Now Degree 25. Archived from the original on March 9, 2012. Retrieved April 17, 2014. A. Gannett, Jack. A History of Chinese Civilization. Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 0521497817. Retrieved April 24, 2014. A. Gorilova, Lilia M., Ed. Handbook of Oriental Studies. Section 8 Uralic and Central Asian Studies, Manchu Grammar. Volume 7 Manchu Grammar. Brill Academic Pub. 
ISBN A 9,4,123,075. Retrieved May 6, 2014. A. Guo, Ban Gang. Hickey, Dennis V., Eds Toward Better Governance in China, An Unconventional Pathway of Political Reform. Lexington Books. ISBN A 0739140299. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Guo, Sujin. Guo, Ban Gang. Guo, Sujin. Guo, Ban Gang, Eds. Challenges Facing Chinese Political Development. Lexington Books. ISBN A 0739120948. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Harris, Rachel. Singing the Village, Music, Memory and Ritual Among the Cyborgs in Jiang. Oxford University Press. ISBN A 0197262976. X. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Howell, Anthony J. Population Migration and Labor Market Segmentation. Empirical Evidence from Xinjiang, Northwest China. Michigan State University. ProQuest. ISBN A 1109243235. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Islamic Culture, Volumes 27 29. Islamic Culture Board. Deccan. 1971. ISBN A 0842017046. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Jun Merger. Schleiter, Birgit N., Ed's Return to the Silk Roots. Routledge. ISBN A 1136175199. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Kim, Kwangmin. Saintly Brokers, Uga Muslims, Trade. And the Making of Qing Central Asia, 1696, 1814. University of California, Berkeley. ProQuest. ISBN A 1109101260. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Kim, Hodong. Holy War in China, The Muslim Rebellion and State in Chinese Central Asia, 1864-1877. Stanford University Press. ISBN A 0804767238. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Lin, Xiao Ting. Nationalists, Muslims Warlords, and the Great Northwestern Development in Pre-Communist China. China and Eurasia Forum Quarterly 5. Isna 1653-4212. A. Latimore, Owen. Pivot of Asia. Sinkiang and the Inner Asian Frontiers of China and Russia. Little, Browner, Levin, Mark. Empires, Native Peoples, and Genocides. In Moses, A. Dirk. Empire, Colony, Genocide, Conquest, Occupation, and Subaltern Resistance in World History. Oxford and New York, Burfan PPA 183 Euro 204. ISBN A 1-84545-452-9. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Liu, Liang H. Wang, Xiaogang, Ed's Nationalism, Democracy and National Integration in China. Taylor and Francis. ISBN A 0203404297. Retrieved March 9, 2014. A. Lipman, Jonathan Neiman. Familiar Strangers, A History of Muslims in Northwest China. University of Washington Press. ISBN A 029580550. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Liu, Tao Tao. Far, David. Unity and Diversity, Local Cultures and Identities in China. Hong Kong University Press. ISBN A 9622094023. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Lorge, Peter. War, Politics and Society in Early Modern China, 900 Euro 1795. Routledge. ISBN A 1134372868. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Martin. Robert Montgomery. China. Political, Commercial, and Social, 
in an official report to Her Majesty's Government. Volume 1 of China, Political, Commercial, and Social, in an official report to Her Majesty's Government, China, Political, Commercial, and Social, in an official report to Her Majesty's Government. J. Madden. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Martin, Norma. The Silk Road. Methuen. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Gar Copyrightography Mathe Copyright Matic, Physique and Politique de Tauts les Parties du Monde, Volume 12. H. Tardu 1804. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Mian, Lieutenant Colonel Dallas L. Ethnic Minorities in the Soviet Military Implications for the Decades Ahead. A University Review. Retrieved May 11, 2014. A. Millwood, James A. Beyond the Pass, Economy, Ethnicity, an Empire in QING Central Asia, 1759-1864. Stanford University Press. ISBN A0804729336. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Millward, James A. Eurasian Crossroads, A History of Xinjiang. Columbia University Press. ISBN A0231139241. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Meyer, Will. Islam and Colonialism Western Perspectives on Soviet Asia. Routledge. ISBN A1135785838. Exa, Nan, Susan Allen. Mampili, Zachariah Karian. Bartoli, Andrea, Ed's Peacemaking, From Practice to Theory, Two Volumes from Practice to Theory. ABC Clio. ISBN A0313375771. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Nan, Susan Allen. Mampili, Zachariah Karian. Bartoli, Andrea, Ed's Peacemaking, From Practice to Theory. Volume 1. ABC Clio. ISBN A0313375763. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Nathan. Andrew James. Scoble, Andrew. China's Search for Security. Columbia University Press. ISBN A0231511647. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Newby, L.J. The Empire and the Canet, A Political History of QING Relations with Kokan C. 1760-1860. Volume 16 of Brill's Inner Asian Library. Brill ISBN A 9004145508. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Naman, Lars Eric. Great Britain and Chinese, Russian and Japanese Interests in Xinjiang, 1918 1934. Volume 8 of Lund Studies in International History. Iselt Studium. ISBN A 9124272876. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Parker, Charles H. Global Interactions in the Early Modern Age, 1400 Euro 1800. Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 1139491415. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Purdue. Peter C. China Marches West, The QING Conquest of Central Eurasia. Harvard University Press. ISBN A 0674016848X. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Purdue, Peter C. China Marches West, The QING Conquest of Central Eurasia. Harvard University Press. ISBN A 0674042026. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Purdue, Peter C. Military Mobilization in 17th and 18th Century China, Russia, and Mongolia. Modern Asian Studies 30, 757 a Euro 793. JSTORA 312949. A. Pollard, Vincent, Ed. State Capitalism, Contentious Politics and Large Scale Social Change. Volume 29 of Studies in Critical Social Sciences. Brill ISBN A 9004194452. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Powers, John. Temperman, David. 
Historical Dictionary of Tibet. Scarecrow Press. ISBN A0810879840. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Prakash, Buddha. The Modern Approach to History. University Publishers. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Rahul, Ram. March of Central Asia. Indus Publishing. ISBN A8173871094. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Reed, J. Todd. Rashk, Diana. The ETIM, China's Islamic Militants and the Global Terrorist Threat. ABC Clio. ISBN A0313365407. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Roberts, John A. G. A History of China. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN A0230344119. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Rudelson, Justin John. Rudelson, Justin Ben Adam. Bones in the Sand, The Struggle to Create Uyghur Nationalist Ideologies in Xinjiang, China. Harvard University. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Rudelson, Justin John. Rudelson, Justin Ben Adam. Oasis Identities, Uyghur Nationalism Along China's Silk Road. Columbia University Press. ISBN A0231107870. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Rudelson, Justin John. Rudelson, Justin Ben Adam. Oasis Identities, Uyghur Nationalism Along China's Silk Road. Columbia University Press. ISBN A0231107862. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Ryan. William L. Russian's Back Revolution in Province Inside China. The Lewiston Daily Sunday. PA3. Retrieved May 12, 2014. A. M. Romanovsky, Ed Eastern Turkestan and Zungaria, and the Rebellion of the Tungans and Tarankis, 1862-1866 by Robert Michael. Notes on the Central Asiatic Question. Calcutta, Office of Superintendent of Government Printing. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Shelton, Dinah C. Shelton. Volume equals Dinah, ed. Encyclopedia of Genocide and Crimes Against Humanity, Volume 3. Macmillan Reference. ISBN A0028658507. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Star. Xinjiang, China's Muslim Borderland. Emmy Sharp. ISBN A0765613182. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Seymour, James D. Anderson, Richard. New Ghosts, Old Ghosts, Prisons and Labor Reform Camps in China. Socialism and Social Movement Series. Contributor Sai Dung Fan. Emmy Sharp. ISBN A0765605104. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Theobald, Ulrich. War Finance and Logistics in Late Imperial China, A Study of the Second Jinchuan Campaign. Will ISBN A 9004255672. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Tinabai, Ken Jolly. China and Kazakhstan, A Two Way Street. Bloomberg Business Week. PA 1. Retrieved May 12, 2014. A. Tinabai, Ken Jolly. Kazakhstan and China, a two way street. Gaz to KZ. Retrieved May 12, 2014. A. Tinabai, Ken Jolly. Kazakhstan and China, a two way street. Transitions Online. Retrieved May 12, 2014. A. Tyler, Christian. Wild West China, The Taming of Xinjiang. Rutgers University Press. ISBN A0813535336. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Walcott, Susan M. Johnson, Corey, Ed's Eurasian Corridors of Interconnection, From the South China to the Caspian Sea. Routledge. ISBN A1135078750. Retrieved April 13, 2014. A. Wang, Gungwu. Zheng. Union, Ed's China and the New International Order. 
Taylor and Francis. ISBN A0203932269. Retrieved March 9, 2014. A. Wayne, Martin I. China's War on Terrorism, Counterinsurgency, Politics and Internal Security. Routledge. ISBN A 1134106238. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Wong, John. Zheng, Union, Ed's China's Post Jiang Leadership Succession, Problems and Perspectives. World Scientific. ISBN A 9812706500X. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. West Odd, Odan. Restless Empire. China and the World Since 1750. Basic Books. ISBN A0465029361. Retrieved April 22, 2014. A. Wong, John. Zheng, Union, Ed's China's Post Jiang Leadership Succession, Problems and Perspectives. World Scientific. ISBN A9812706500 X. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. Tso. Gang. Reinventing China Imperial Qing Ideology and the Rise of Modern Chinese National Identity in the Early 20th Century 32. Sage Publications. Archived from the original on March 25, 2014. Retrieved April 17, 2014. A. France. Cometa Copyright des Travaux Historiques et Scientifiques. Section de Gar Copyrightography. Bulletin de la Section de Gar Copyrightography, Volume 10. Paris, Imprimerie Nationale. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A, in Eurasia, Volume 4, Issues 1 2. Contributor University of Cambridge. Mongolia and Inner Asia Studies Unit. The White Horse Press for the Mongolia and Inner Asia Studies Unit at the University of Cambridge. 2002. ISBN A0804729336. Retrieved March 10, 2014. A. UPI. Radio War Aims at China Muslims. The Montreal Gazette. PA11. Retrieved May 12, 2014. A. Sources. A. This article here incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain. A. Chisholm, Hugh, Ed. Encyclopaedia Britannica. Cambridge University Press A.